There's no shortage of scandals in esports. From match fixing to cheating, it can get pretty dark. But today we wanted to talk about a different kind of scandal. The kind of scandal that leaves you scratching your head and thinking, what the f is happening? But before we get into it, I have to remind you, as always, to hit the like button, the subscribe button, and to ring the notification bell. And when you're done, buckle up, kiddo, because today we're counting down the top 10 most ridiculous scandals in esports. Starting this list off is the time Zoms decided to go and piss off an entire region for no apparent reason. Uh, not just for me, but because there are some people there who are being shit-talking uh, our region and our nation and saying things, uh, bad things about our day-to-day -day life and our daily difficulties. It would be great to be able to face them for myself or personal reasons and to shut them up a little. Everyone knows Latin American esports has one of the most passionate fan bases in the world, thanks in part to their success across so many games, including Valorant. Not even able to get to have the showstopper online to buy some space to buy some it? time! Kazan is able to get two, but oh, Mystic. Mystic snatch it back! Crew down to two! Oh my gosh, no it's way. all down to Domo, the 1v1! He's got the ult and they've done it! Unfortunately for Sentinel Zoms, he didn't realize that he should probably watch his tone when shit-talking a combined population of over 600 million people. We are actually gonna come back to this bit of drama later in the list, but essentially Shazam made a joke at the expense of Brazilian teams Furia and Team Vikings. Fans on Twitter did not take it very well. Then Zoms decided to make it 10 times worse. Flexing your watches and tweeting stuff like, can't wait to beat your shit region might not be the smartest move. But you know what they say. Revenge is a dish best served on land. Klaus ready and holding though. Dapper, it's your time to shine right about now. It's all on you, buddy. Surrounded at all fronts. It's over. It's done with. Crew against all of our expectations against all odds. Sentinel Next up at number nine is Ice Poseidon and his alleged crypto scam. Yeah, I could give the money back. It is within my power, um, but I'm gonna look out for myself and not do that. I, I, you know, I don't like know what else to say. That's just the most honest answer. Ice Poseidon is no stranger to controversy, so it's no surprise that he somehow got himself involved in a crypto rug pull. I started a crypto coin called CX Coin and things were going mostly okay until YouTuber Coffeezilla called him out. According to Coffeezilla, Ice was allegedly doing a classic pump and dump scam. Ice Poseidon's scheme apparently took him only two weeks of work to set up before he apparently got bored with the project and decided to stop working on it and just took the money. The worst part is that Ice Poseidon was already salivating over the idea of doing a rug pull. You're telling me I could create a CX coin and then people could buy it because I could say that the community is super strong and then I could sell it in 10 seconds and make 10 million dollars. What the f am I doing? I'm sitting here taking donations instead. What the f am I doing? It, it just comes down to the trust because, you know, I don't, you, know, you I mean, if I was you, I'd run off with the bag. I don't, you tell me when it's pumped and then I'm out and then I'll see you later. Coffeezilla alleges that Ice made it off with over $300,000 of investors' money. Meanwhile, Ice Poseidon claims that he removed 300,000 from the liquidity pool due to an impending market crash. But Coffeezilla and scorned investors didn't believe that for a second. It doesn't seem like a joke anymore. It seems like you scammed your fans. Uh, no, not a, not a scam. Um, you don't think we're drawing 300K is, is a scam? Our eighth spot goes to Riot's bizarre ruling over a Furia exploit used at Valorant Champions. Lining up in the back wall, all the Sentinels players firing off together. In comes Mazin, very important flank through. There's the hole, there's the stick. Can he find it? Can he find it? Yes, he can! Still Furia alive, the Red Bull clutch there for NCR. Valorant's first major ended up being more of a shit show than most expected. And a lot of the drama had to do with some of Riot's weird rulings on exploits. Of course, there was the illegal cipher cam that Vivo Keed's stars used, which led them having to replay their match, but there was a far crazier situation that same tournament. What they're doing is they're dwindling the rounds where they can actually try real strats, and they're becoming more and more readable on those rounds. Sentinels only needed one round to close it out, but Furia was mounting what could have been an insane comeback. However, a tech pause was called by one of the refs to discuss the legality of a jump boost done by Furia. 
The pause ended up lasting almost 20 minutes. Virio lost all their momentum and immediately lost the next round. Backside, spike down. They know where he is. They know where that drone came from. He's going to have to make this. Oh my god, Tens going up with the updraft and comes Ooh, down and slams into NZR with the daggers and carries Sentinels across the finish line. Our seventh absurd scandal is the time Hungrybox got a little crabby. The crab? Oh, he's saying someone threw that at him? Someone Just because Whoa. Hungrybox won? Oh, that person is about to get body. Hungrybox is one of the greatest melee players of all time. His accomplishments are legendary. Unfortunately, when you're as good as HBox is, you end up with some haters. Haters who will apparently throw crabs at you. That's right, at Pound 2019, just after HBox won the entire tournament, someone threw a crab at him. HBox was, of course, reasonably upset, but now that we're a few years out, we can all admit that this was kind of hilarious. Plus, HBox even got revenge on the crab. In the sixth position is the scandal that can be summarized by two words, help sewer. Helping, I need help sewers, guys. Thrifty. <laughs> At the 2022 VCT Open Qualifier, TSM were facing off against T1 when all of a sudden there was a long tech pause that ended with T1 forfeiting the match. Spectators had no idea what was going on. TSM was shitposting and Sabrosa was accusing T1 of cheating. Eventually, Rai confirmed that T1's coach was illegally communicating with the team via all chat. Are you about to say what the coach typed? He said Rosa alt. <laughs> and I was like, yo, what the f***? <laughs> The coach was suspended and his cry to help sewers was memed into oblivion. They were using VPN to like make their ping higher and shit. It's disgusting. I'm like, all right. I'm like, whatever, bro. Breaking us into the top five is the jumping bug controversy from the 2017 PGL Major. If they don't win this, if they don't come back, go down 0 and 1. Big still have a large job ahead of them, let's be honest, if they're gonna make a playoff. But it's not from the realm of possibility that we get two or three challenging teams in, especially with G2 as a challenging team. Cloud9, now they played in Cologne, taps in how he's what? playing right now for big as he goes aggressive. Nico and Alu stand no chance. Players figured out that in certain areas of maps like Inferno's Banana, players could see over obstacles without being noticed if they crouched at the right moment. Now this bug was in the game for a while before the 2017 Major, and certainly several players and teams used it but all the heat went to Big, who abused the shit out of the exploit while facing FaZe. Wants to keep getting in their grills and shutting them down, based in by the key up. He's just jumping up with the flashbang as well. Wants to spot one player, flash down, and allow Tabs in to potentially get two or three kills in that spot. It's a nice little setup. A risky player, we'll see if it works out for them. There's a flash, Tabs in faces. Doesn't get anything for it just yet, but Nico seems to think something's going on there. It was so bad that all 16 teams got together and made a collective gentleman's agreement to abstain from doing it. Taking the fourth spot on our list is the FGC's insane Tom Brady incident. Now, before you get confused, we are not talking about the football guy. This Tom Brady is a Mortal Kombat player who used to stream regularly on Twitch. Essentially, this Tom Brady was raising money through Twitch donations to go to NEC 2019 in Pennsylvania. He raised $600, but then no-showed and got disqualified. It seemed like a regular old scam, but things got weird when Tom tried to defend himself. Tom claimed he flew to Philadelphia where the event was taking place, but the Uber to the event itself was too expensive. Just, just, just show me that receipt and then I'll be like, all right, you're right, I was wrong. But until you show me November 30th on a Thursday, that Uber receipt, you're full of shit. To prove he actually went to Philly, he showed the Uber receipts from his time there. 
except those receipts were clearly photoshopped and the dates weren't just wrong, they didn't exist. He also said he had spent all of the money to buy a new PS4 because the airline somehow lost his. You want me to return the PS4 pig? Is that gonna make you feel better? Eventually, Evo champion Sonic Fox showed up to own Tom so hard, he basically vanished from the FGC. When you said on November 30th, Thursday, that you were in New Jersey. Do you, are you seeing the issue here? Okay, so what you're saying is, you want to know- November 30th, okay. Thursday. You want to know where I was the issue here. during this time period here. No, I want to know where you were on November 30th, Thursday. Coming in third place is CSGO's most notorious LAN, Gaming Paradise. Close your eyes and imagine a beautiful tropical island with gourmet food, five-star service, and tier one CSGO. You might be thinking, that sounds like Firefest for sweaty nerds, and you would be 100% correct. Gaming Paradise was a CSGO event that promised teams a festival of music, drinks, and gaming. What they got was something very different. To no surprise, the event was a disaster. The internet was dog shit, the weather was uncooperative, and the organizers couldn't even get PCs to run the tournament on. On top of all of that, some staff and players even got their passports confiscated by police. All in all, not one of CSGO's brightest moments. Bad thing that happened today, uh, one of our staff members from Gaming RS approached me and told me that uh, he can't get his passport. Our second spot on the list goes to the sketchy as hell Save the Kids crypto scam. My name's Frazier. My name's Jarvis. I'm Tico. I'm Ricegum. I'm Nikon. And I support Save the Kids Token. 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 Yes, we are back at it again with another crypto pump and dump scandal. But this time, FaZe Clan's very own Kay and Jarvis got involved. Save the Kids was supposed to be a charitable crypto coin that had a percentage of its worth going to help children in need. I have spent like 30 minutes just vetting this myself and have come to the conclusion that this is something that is wholly unreliable. It is using Save the Kids in order to create this weird token that is so obviously pump and dump that anybody, all right, even with the worst eyesight could have seen this coming. So how is it that these influencers with actual marketing teams, uh, actual teams themselves didn't come to this conclusion? And it seems like to an extent, some of them did. Shockingly, as soon as the coin went live, the price plummeted significantly and investors immediately started accusing the influencers of participating in a pump and dump. The FaZe members involved were quickly fired or suspended and FaZe clan distanced themselves from what is a highly illegal activity. Um, all of FaZe knew about this the entire time. Uh, if you don't like it, sue me. I know for a fact every mother in this team knows exactly what's happening. So it's funny for them to kick people out and be like, oh, we had no idea. Bullshit. Mother I guarantee you that they're selling these uh, they're selling these deals to their teams or whatever, and they'll be like, oh, listen, man, it's cool. All you do is you buy in and then you sell immediately after. It's all good, dude. You'll make a ton of money. Guarantee. There's no way that like they're just passing these deals on. They're like, oh, well, I don't know, man. Good luck. Figure out how to do it. Coming in first place is the controversy that shook the world of Counter-Strike, the coaching bug. Look at this spectate bug from the coach. Like, how is this even possible? This is go, you need to fix this. There's been like tons of official games. Back in 2020 and 2021, freelance CSGO referee Michał Slowinski uncovered a huge scandal. He discovered that coaches were using an exploit at the highest level of CSGO competition. It's Heroic versus Astralis. It's the match where Hunden for the first 10 rounds had a coach camera or had a camera and free cam on banana. The bug he found allowed coaches to potentially watch rounds play out from anywhere on the map. Coaches could then use this stuck camera position to get information on the other team mid-round. The Esports Integrity Commission launched an investigation and three coaches, including Heroic's Hunden, were banned. We're as close to a sport as you can possibly get in terms of esports. Competitive integrity, integrity is the most important thing that we have at this point. Once people don't trust what they're watching, everything else is out the window. And so that must be protected at all costs. Since then, more than 37 coaches have been banned for using what is now referred to as Hunden Cam. 
All right, folks, that's it. Those are the top 10 most ridiculous esports scandals that we could find. If you think we missed one, let us know down in the comment section below. Take care of yourselves and others, and I'll see you in the next one. You guys want to hear the most ridiculous thing? What, what the admin said? Okay. The admin said you can do the sea jump, but you're not allowed to do it with Jet's passive ability. So if you're Jet and you want to do this jump, you have to do it the way, like, without the passive. And then it's allowed. But if you use Jet's passive in any shape and form, then it's illegal. I don't know how that makes any sense at all. Short, eh?